Pam param pam 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 Good afternoon or morning, wherever you are. Hello, happy Friday, I think, in general. Uh, I'm just going to do a scrolling headline, uh, which uh, is all about headlines, actually. It is this little uh, irresistible headlines <laughs> if you're watching this okay so yeah there we go down the bottom of the screen that's what we're talking about today irresistible headlines good to see you good to see you all joining the numbers are piling up because the audience arrives uh, if you are here say hello in the comments say hello in the comments smells here lovely Mel here Love you lots, Mal. Glad you're here. So if you're sneaking in from work or if you've finished work, but good to see you anyway. Rita's here as well. Hello, Rita. Let's display some of these lovely hellos. Uh, if you are here, type hello and I'll display you on the screen. Yeah, fantastic. Good to see you all. Headlines, headlines, headlines. Why are headlines important? Well, we'll get into that in a minute. Um, but before we do, a wee bit of housekeeping as ever. Just make sure that uh, StreamYard knows who you are so we can see your name. Yeah, Coralie's here from up in the northwestern seaboard, I think you call it, <laughs> in America. Oh. Annabella's here. As you tuned to this, is part of Fridays. Oh, that's so nice. That is so nice. So sweet. Thank you. Um, just reminded me actually just today there was a, a famous uh, DJ or announcer uh, show host in the UK on Radio 2 uh, who has just retired after 30 years Ken Bruce is his name and he had a, a show at the same time mid-morning uh, on national radio on the BBC every year for the last 30 odd years and he's done his last show today and everyone's really upset uh, so maybe in 30 years time Annabella we can look back together and go Charlie's got to retire. He's nearly a hundred <laughs> or something. Uh, that would be funny, wouldn't it? That would be funny. Uh, yeah, no, I'm so glad. So if you are here, uh, just um, put your name in the comments. Say hello, 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 hello. So I know who you are. I feed off your energy. And uh, bizarrely, you know, I can't get myself to pull these uh, earphones out, even though there is no possibility of anyone actually talking to me or any noise coming in. It's like a comfort blanket, isn't it? So what it does actually, it isolates the sound from the rest of the environment if there if there is any. Uh, Steve's here. Steve Fullerton. He hasn't retired, just come to New Pastures. Yeah, he's retired from BBC, hasn't he? He's uh, gone to commercial radio, what the BBC would call the dark side. Holy moly, second week on the trot Elaine, exactly. Uh, I'm stunned. Have you have you nothing better to do, woman? <laughs> I'm kind of glad you haven't, actually. I'm kind of glad you haven't. Now, here's something. This is really important. So if you are this lovely Facebook user who's been motivated to say hello, um, uh, hi, everyone, I'd like you to do the following, because uh, I'm just going to swap the banner around a bit. Uh, some of you will be so bored with seeing this but nevertheless, I'm going to do it again. Streamyard.com forward slash Facebook. Type that into your browser. And there's a button to press to give Streamyard permission to display your name. So I can actually see who you are then. Uh, Streamyard.com forward slash Facebook. Just do it. Uh, same applies to you. Second Facebook user from Pennsylvania. I always think of Transylvania when I see that. It's not the same as it, Transylvania. Uh, Pennsylvania actually exists. Uh, hey everyone, says Facebook user. So don't forget, if you are displaying on this screen right now as Facebook user, go to streamyard.com forward slash Facebook and give it permission to display your name. Lovely Mimi is here. Hello, my darling. Mimi and I were hugging not two weeks ago. We were, we were in the same room together in <laughs> in, in Western America. Uh, Caroline, yeah. Hello, 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 hello. I won't bless smoke it. Anyone feels like a paid community getting trains like this. Ha! Ah, mm, you give me an idea there. 
Yeah, should we put a paywall on these sessions then? So a little vote. If you think if you think you ought to be paying for this session, say yes. If you'd rather get it for free, you can say no. <laughs> uh, uh, well, Arabelle's got the ball rolling. Yes, I know. But do you know what? Uh, we do do a paid session. We do do uh, there on Tuesdays. They're called Academy Secret Sessions. Hands up if any of you actually show up on those. Those are a step higher, shall we say, in some ways than this session, because of one important thing, because we do them on Zoom. So we actually have open discussions, open mics, and uh, you know the people on those Tuesday sessions can actually directly ask questions and receive uh, live coaching. So that is for our Academy, our Academy Secret Sessions, and uh, Sam, is on the inside for those. You got our first one next week. Uh, Caroline's been doing them for yonks, although Caroline likes free. You're all bloody tight, you lot, aren't you? I go to the secret session, says Mel, and I always come away with something to think about and do. Yeah, you know, action based. Well, I tell you what, why don't I do today try and do a sort of microcosm of what people get on the secret sessions? Greetings from Central Alabama. I always, uh, I always channel my. Uh, uh, my inner forest gump when I say the word Alabama. <laughs> Alabama. Uh, yeah, fantastic. Okay, well, listen, let's uh, let's have a look at this. Is there a free lunch? Yeah. Well, today might feel like a bloody free lunch then, might it, you lot? So munch away. Enjoy your free lunch. You don't have to pay for this session. <laughs> Except in a little bit of time. Okay, let's stop all this uh, faffing around and get on to the subject of the day. Uh, which, as he's now scrolling on the bottom, is irresistible headlines. First of all, why is a headline important? Well, duh, almost, uh, <laughs> without stating the bleeding obvious. A headline is important because uh, if people are not reading your content, in other words, if you haven't stopped the scroll, it doesn't matter how good your content is. And your content is, some other time, going to include offers. You know, you're going to be selling stuff, aren't you? You're going to be offering stuff, making an offer to your crowd. And in those cases, it's even more important that people stop the scroll and read the bloody thing, right? Now, I'm going to, I'm going to just show you an idea of a headline here, which was linked to an offer, uh, which is linked to an offer, and where I recognise that the priority was not to promote the offer, but to stop the scroll. Just write those three words down, S-T-S, stop the scroll, okay? Um, stick it on your vision board where you can see it, because that is your number one priority when you're writing content. I could have done that as a little test, couldn't I, a little question and answer. What is the number one priority when you're writing content? The number one priority when you're writing content, I will tell you, uh, is to stop the bloody scroll. So here's um, just an example. I'm going to share a screen uh, and then we'll talk about some uh, interesting examples and we'll also get to do a workshop. Uh, so I'm kind of hoping this is it. Yeah, that looks like it. So um, let me just make this a little bit bigger for you so you can see it a bit larger, a bit larger on your screen. Let me find. Yeah. So the headline is this will change your mind about Facebook. Now that is a scroll stopper of a headline, isn't it? Uh pattern interrupt, you might say, Jeff. Yeah. Um why is that a scroll stopper? Well, everyone has got an opinion about Facebook, right? You either think it's the great blue gift from heaven, like I do, <laughs> or or you think, oh hey, Facebook, we don't have to use it, right? Most people are probably more on that side of the spectrum. Um, and, you know, we've got into, before we make any kind of offer, don't you love the doomsayers, you know? And there's a bit of a framing statement here. When they say that the platform, the system, the method is dead, what they're really saying is, I can't make it work, so it must be someone else's fault. Now, nobody wants to be tarred with that brush, do they? So we're straight away starting to change your mind about Facebook. If your view of Facebook is that 
oh, it's dead, it don't work, it's just rubbish. You know, Facebook's an awful place to be. And I've just told you, haven't I? I can't make it worse than somebody else's fault. You don't want to be in that group, do you? So you start already starting to think, well, maybe I'm wrong about Facebook, right? And then I go on to say, look, Facebook groups are an awesome way to build, nurture, and monetize. You know, I'm tooting my own horn, like, you know, generating over a million dollars in revenue, 6,500 members. And here we transition gently into the offer. Look, guys, here's how to write an offer, right? Now I'm going to show you how to do the same. Bit of scarcity here, right? This closely guarded secret normally unavailable to my paying clients. So paying clients like Caroline and Elaine and Gregory and Melanie and Sam uh, and Mimi, you know, all you guys, paying clients. You've already got access to this, but for the rest of the free group who's reading this, uh, there's a bit of scarcity there, yeah? It's only available to paying clients. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a free live workshop and it's happening next Wednesday, okay? So uh, the, the, the lazy way to have written this post would have been to say, free live workshop next Wednesday, right? All about Facebook groups. Click below or type below or something like that, right? Now, I guarantee that wouldn't have had anything like the impact than writing a compelling headline like that to get people to stop the scroll and have a look at it. Because if your headline says, right, free workshop, that's not going to stop as many people, is it? Because this, everybody's doing a free workshop, and there's free workshops everywhere. We're all sick of bloody free workshops, aren't we? Okay, so can you please give us a yay in the comments if this makes sense, if you can see how framing an offer post with a headline like that is more effective than just posting that and expecting people to stop and scroll. Give us a yay if that makes sense. Give us a yay in the comments if that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense, says Coralie. Yep, says Caroline. Uh, you told us we only got three seconds to live. Yeah, that was a good one, wasn't it? I remember that one. I'll show you that in a minute, actually, because I'm going to show you my um, from my daily brain tattoos headlines. So, yep, we're starting to get there. Yes, it creates curiosity. It does, doesn't it? It creates curiosity. So, we're going to do a little workshop. Let me come back in. Um, I've scribbled some notes out here. Just before we do the workshop, I want to show you a couple more of the headlines that I use on my daily brain tattoos. Now, bear in mind, these daily brain tattoos go by email. So the email version of stopping the scroll on social media is open rates, isn't it? Getting someone to open your email. Because when you wake up in the morning, you've probably got, as I do, you know, Anything between 10 and 30 emails in your inbox. I actually don't have that, much, that many now because I've really curated my email um, subscription list. However, um, I'm going to guess you got more than 10 emails um, in your Gmail inbox or wherever it is when you wake up in the morning. You're not going to read all those, are you? You want to delete some of them out of hand without even reading them. Okay. Now, we don't want that to be our emails, do we? We don't want that to be your emails. I said I don't want it to be my emails. So I do headlines like this. I'm going to show you this. You'll like this one. This, um, this post actually did trigger the session for today, okay? Because uh, I just thought that is a great example of a headline, isn't it? Um, I think on the, uh, this is on my blog, actually on the email, I said, why are you not going to hell or something like that? Um, and what this is about, there's another lesson here, guys. So get, get ready to, to make some notes here. This is a really cool idea. So I referenced a newspaper article um, that I tripped over uh, recently, but it was a five years old new, newspaper article where the Pope um, in the Vatican uh, issued some kind of a, uh, I don't know what they call them, papal, uh, I think it was down there, papal uh, edict or something like that where he said he changed his mind, or the, or the, the Catholic Church has changed its mind officially, on going to hell, right? Nobody's actually going to hell, he said, right? And it made the news <laughs> declaring that nobody's actually going to hell. Now, what I loved about this article and what, what, you know, what drew me to writing uh, a Daily Brain Tattoo about it is this, that, you know, it's, it's less important than the fact that it's news uh, 
you know, his news was, you know, he might have said it, or he may not have said it. But what attracted me was that it was immediately shared all around the world. Every news feed around the world was full of, it's official, there is no hell. Pope says there is no hell, right? It's official. It went all around the world, didn't it? it went all around the world. Everybody was talking about it. Um, so I just thought to myself, what, what are the elements of a headline like that? Well, first of all, it beggars belief, doesn't it? You know, literally, I guess. Um, you know, if you're a devout Catholic and you've believed all your life that you might go to hell, um, then that that's a, a complete disruption, isn't it, of your, of your belief systems? You know, for, for me, as I, I guess, as a, as a non-Catholic, it, it, it just made me go, I can't believe he said that. What a strange thing for the Pope to say. Um, it also, as a headline, teased you to read more because I wanted to find out why the Pope now thought that I wasn't going to hell anymore and nobody was going to hell. was not an interesting thing for him to say. Yeah? Uh, it's quirky. Of course it is. It's quirky. It seems controversial and kind of important, important because it was firming up every news feed around the world. Um, wh whether or not you're a, a Catholic or indeed a religious believer of any kind, when the Pope speaks, it kind of has a, a level of importance in it for some reason. Um, but also for most people, because most people are not Catholics, it was slightly humorous, wasn't it? It made me crack a wry grin and go, what, what the hell is this guy on about? So there's a perfect example, isn't it? Perfect example. And by the way, I, I, I didn't lose any opportunity with this headline because we're, we're talking about the headline rather than the, the, the Pope's post at this point. I saw an opportunity with this headline to promote the session today. So if you guys got the email this morning, you will have seen, imagine if you could write content that ticked all those boxes. Oh wait, you can, today at 4 p.m. So again, this is a, a quirky way, a disruptive way of me promoting this session today. And you may well be here because of this very message. I don't know if you've read this this morning, but yeah, I'm going to be able to write heavenly content, ba -bum. <laughs> I don't, don't need a papal blessing to say that. So what we're doing here, and, and that previous example showed you, that you don't actually have to reference your offer in a headline to get people reading it. So can we all agree that's a core concept? You don't have to reference your offer in a headline to get people reading it and taking up your offer. Your offer can be a, a transition, it can be a, a color, it can be a uh, it can be a result, if you like, an outcome of the point that you're making. So I'm really, really keen that we start to understand that an irresistible headline can make sales for you, that can you know position an offer without actually having the offer in the headline. Um, yeah. J j just give us a yay on that if that's landing, because I think that's a really important thing that we've picked up. I'm going to do a workshop now. We're going to do a workshop. Um, that's all it is, isn't it? That's the only job. That is the only job. Um, where else do you see headlines? Where else are headlines used to great effect? Can you think of another commercial arena where headlines are used? I just need one word from you. Yes. What am I thinking about here when I'm talking about headlines? Where do you typically, on a regular basis, see great headlines that make you do something? Let's have a look, see if we've got it. Uh, yeah, brilliant, brilliant, Nigel, you've got it. I was thinking specifically newspapers. Um, I was in town this morning walking back from the gym and I walked past the, the news agent. And uh, you know all the tabloids are, are folded. You know the half folded in the in the rack. You can see the bit that's above the fold, as it's called, which is the headline. Think about your above the fold metaphorically, right? Which is the bit that people see before they start reading. And the headlines were just insane. They were so compelling. I actually stopped. I never, I never read newspapers. I wouldn't read the article. I just read the read the headlines just to just to you know wallow in the. In, in the admiration of how great these headlines are. Uh, it's, it's actually a fact because um, my uh, one of my uncles years ago used to work in print newspapers and uh, he always said how the, the best paid writers um, in the organisation weren't the journalists but the headline writers because the journalists would submit uh, an article and uh, it was the sub-editor or the headline writer's job then to make that article get read and those you know six to eight words in in the headline were, were where the magic uh, happened basically 
uh, yeah, there's a newspaper where you spawn. Yeah, hi, Jeffrey. Um, and it, yeah, it's interesting to, to see how bonkers they are. They're the interested to die on his feet. Yeah, that really is, isn't it? Really, really is. Yeah, oh my God, that was. Yeah, as a, as a pacifist, uh, I, I can't rejoice in anything like that, but that was the Argentine conflict in 82, wasn't it? Um, and the Sun newspaper, I think, just said gotcha and showed Argentine warships sinking into the South Atlantic. Uh, yeah. Okay, so we're all, we're all agreed that headlines are important. Let's have a play with some headline ideas. So what we to do is I want you to do a quirky flip, a quirky flip. Okay, so I'm going to give you some examples here to get you going. And then fingers on keyboards, you're going to get your creative juices going. Um, I'm going to post a comment, which is now going to be on, I'm going to be able to post this, I think. Yes, I can. Okay, so there's one. The dark side of positive thinking, a therapist's warning. This is what we call a quirky flip. So it's a bit strange. It's going to generate curiosity. And it seems contrarian, doesn't it? It's a flip. Let me show you the other one. The problem with emotional intelligence. <laughs> By the way, I haven't written any of these articles yet. I've just written the headlines. And therein lies a lesson, folks. Don't start with the article, start with the headline. Start with the article. Start with the bloody headline, right? The ugly truth about self-love, why you might be doing it wrong. I've deliberately uh, written these headlines this afternoon um, to resonate with your potential niches, you guys. Give us some give us some love for these, by the way. Give us some thumbs and things if you like them. I'm going to show you a couple more and then you're going to get on and do one. Do one that relates, and I want you to start thinking about this already, one that relates to your particular niche uh, and will resonate with your particular tribe. Uh, there's one. Now I'm sure that you could, this last one's a bit loose, I must say, I just threw this in. I don't know why I thought of this last one, right? I don't know why I thought about this one. I just did. Just shows how my strange mind works. Dietary tips I learned from Elvis. I don't know. <laughs> Where did that come from? Uh, so I'll just go back on some of these. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Uh, I appeared twice. Why are they? These are all appearing twice. Very strange. Uh, like the truth about self-love, why you might be doing it wrong. Problem with emotional intelligence. And I started off here, if you remember, with this one. Uh, the dark side of positive thinking, a therapist warning. Okay, so I want you to get cracking on these. Try and put a bit of humour into it. But I want you to write a headline that's intriguing, that's contrarian. What, what, I, what I call these were quirky flips. Quirky flips, okay. That's a flip, isn't it? Because most people would tell you not to be selfish. Yeah, most people would tell you not to be selfish. Um, most people would say self-love is essential, isn't it? But surely there's a wrong way to do self-love, isn't there? The extreme form of self-love is narcissism, isn't it? Nobody wants to be a narcissist, do they? What was I thinking of the problem with emotional intelligence? Type some in, please. Uh, give us some quirky flips about the work you do that could attract your tribe to read on, read further. The problem with emotional intelligence, what was I thinking there? Um, well, one problem could be, and I'm not an expert here, is if you become so emotionally aware that you become hypersensitive. So you're sensitive in a way to everybody's emotional quirks you try and overread people you try and overthink people's comments and reactions people's behavior yeah could you be too emotionally intelligent that's what i'm saying maybe 
Right, let's get into some of these. You guys are going. So Jeffrey started the ball rolling. Well, what you believe about yourself is all wrong. Jeffrey, I like that. I'd like you to be more concise, please. What you believe about what about yourself? Pick a, an aspect of your personality or your behavior or a person's personality that you could pick on. So you could say, you know, um, what you believe about telling the truth is all wrong. I read an article just this morning about uh, selective white lies, polite white lies, you know, to save people's feelings, that kind of thing. So you could say what you believe about telling the truth is all wrong, for example. Right? Uh, come back to us, Jeffrey, with a more specific thing about what aspect of yourself. Oh, yeah. Why do, why, yeah. Why everything you know about dieting is wrong. Yeah. Don't do another diet ever. Yeah. Oh, Sam, love that one. That's good, isn't it? It's too much confidence holding you back. Yeah. I, I do think some some confidence can be misplaced, can't it? Oh, we're really getting into this now. I, I, by the way, I hope you're keeping a record of these. Uh, don't just leave them in the comments. Thread. Write them down. Because uh, I want you to write articles and, and posts using these things uh, anytime soon. And I think in stupid could be the smartest thing you do. Yeah, so you, you could write a piece about overthinking, couldn't you? Now, by the way, in each of these... What I'm going to feed you, in case you haven't thought already, is I'm going to feed you an offer that you could hang on the end of this post. So, Elaine, I think it could, stupid could be the smartest thing you do. I'm putting words into your mouth here, but if I didn't know you, I'd probably just say an article about this could be, you're probably overthinking stuff. Here's some three examples of people overthinking things and it turned out badly. Uh, if you want to stop overthinking, I'm doing a simple workshop next week, all about how to think simple and clear and stupid. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that kind of thing. Uh, right. Why you shouldn't fake it till you make it. Yeah, love that. Because everybody's heard of that, aren't they? Fake it, fake it till you make it. Um, and then on the back of that, Melanie, towards the end of the, um, the little story that you're telling, you could hang a, a free workshop, couldn't you, about um, the real power of showing up genuine on, with authority, you know, and telling, telling people like it is. Um, danger of earning enough. Yeah, I love that. Um, it, 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 you know, it's almost so so well understood that that it's it's not so quirky. But yeah, yeah, okay. Maybe, maybe the danger of earning too much might get it more powerful than that. Friend suggestion: I work on longevity. You aren't dead yet, so stop acting like it. Boom. I've heard that before from you, but it is absolutely fantastic, isn't it? Absolutely fantastic. Uh, you ain't dead yet, so stop acting like it. That is a wake-up call, isn't it, for half the population, at least. Yeah, why work is overrated. Um, and what to do instead. You could probably fit more words in there, uh, Jeffrey. That's absolutely brilliant. Um, <laughs> why your dreams don't matter. A guide to staying mediocre. I, actually, I love these lists. Um, I, I, I did uh, well, about 10 reasons, uh, or, no, 10 ways to suck at social media. Yeah, 10 ways to suck at social media. Um, and, it, and it got quite funny, actually. When you start thinking about how badly people do things, it becomes amusing to other people who are reading. I think it becomes amusing because people refuse to identify with the persona that you're talking about, you know. So in your guide to staying mediocre, maybe you can really be hard hitting. Uh, you can talk about all the simple ways to stay mediocre because people want to sort of see themselves in those things. And say, you, don't, you don't risk offending anyone, do you? Uh, so that's left to be an empath. <clears throat> yeah, too, then. Um, yeah, so, you know, I, I'd like to see a, a numbered list there. These were well done, you know, like 10 ways to benefit from being egocentric, you know. Ten ways being egocentric is a great idea. Oh my God, we're getting some great ones here. Why sitting them straight cause his pain? Yeah, Sl slouch more, <laughs> slouch more for God's sake. Uh, I, I know that's not what you mean, actually. Yeah. Yeah, in a bullish terrified, you might find out. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, what you're in a bull is really scared of. Something like that. Yeah. What you're in a bully is really scared of. Um, 
Yeah. There, there, there's, there's, a, there's a question, yeah. Um, that's a lovely engagement question in itself, more more than a headline. You could just do that as a post. You could say, you know, do you ever feel like you're running fast to get nowhere? I see what people say. Uh, yeah, boom. Oh, my God. Um, if you have any social proof on that, Greg, or even better framing to that might be the 27-page document that saved Georgina $700,000 or you know whatever case it relates to and then you can talk about the doc talk about the case study and you can draw people in because everybody's going to want that document of that right on so the 27 page document that saved uh stephen and mike seven hundred thousand dollars yeah very very nice yeah yeah uh screen went dark uh nobody else getting a dark screen are you you're not dark anybody dark anybody dark no i don't think anybody's uh I think anyone's getting dark apart from you. <laughs> very, very dark. Um, yeah, my fasting makes you feel fuller. I do intermittent fasting actually. I only eat between six and uh, between midday and six p.m. Uh, you keep it simple, exactly. Um, yeah, the real damage your toxic customers are doing to your business. Yeah, something like that slump your way into good posture oh i'm slumping just reading that i'm totally slumping that is absolutely brilliant these are great folks aren't they? i hope you're all benefiting from each other's ideas here when you see these on the screen write them down quickly I'm, I'm, I'm leaving them up long enough for you to write them down um but you know in all these ideas that you that that we're creating today um that the stuff that you can clone you know there's, there's ideas that you can use in the concepts are you running just in time on your earnings? Uh, I'm not sure what that means. Uh, Caroline, say that in another way. Hello all, that's a good headline. Hey Terry. <laughs> oh, look at that, the dangers of self-help. Exactly, yeah, it's lovely, that, isn't it? Uh, yeah, three dangers of self-help. How self-help could be ruining your life. Yeah, I mean, just, just go, you know, just go, 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 go. Um, Coralie's written a headline here. I'm in trouble with the video going dark. <laughs> That's for you, Gregory. Uh, Tell me to increase your worth without spending a penny. Beautiful. Beautiful. That's fantastic, isn't it? Spending a penny in the UK is also a euphemism for going to the toilet. So I'm sure that's not what you meant. But <laughs> Why being skinny is your greatest gift? Hallelujah. I tell you what, I learned more when I was bankrupt than I did uh, when I was earning bloody millions. Uh, yeah, why are you choosing to stay stuck? Facebook user, if you want to go to streamyard.com forward slash Facebook and give it permission to uh, display your name, we know you are. Why are you choosing to stay stuck? Yeah, why indeed? Why indeed? Don't hire them, fire them. Oh my God, we've got, some, we've got another two here and then we're going to go down a bit further. Um, you're all doing okay with your dark screens, by the way. Everybody's saying no. Uh, supermarket software that goes to supply chain problems. Okay. 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 Uh, right, okay. That's a very specific um, headline, isn't it? Um, it, 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 if I wanted to grab there somebody's attention there, I'd use the word REVEALED, in all caps. REVEALED, colon, the supermarket software that causes supply chain problems. Yeah. The supermarket software behind all the supply chain problems. REVEALED. Yeah. That's what you could do, isn't it? Um, yeah. Oh, hi, Judy. How to get revenge on your ex. Yeah in five minutes a day or less <laughs> oh my god everyone wants to do that um i've come up with some more for you guys by the way um Corley says it went black again oh i see right okay uh here's one my johnny x marketing um i do apologize if there's any interruption in the stream here it's not coming from from my end it must be the the undersea cable to America or something. Um, mm, yeah, strange, isn't it? Um, I'm going to show you something uh, here now. I'm going I'm to put some more comments in of mine. Um, 
which you're welcome, by the way, because I haven't used these, right? I haven't used uh, any of these headlines that I'm putting up in the comments, but uh, you can use them if you want, okay? So, time travel is now possible, here's how. Um, what I was thinking of this, this could apply to therapists who specialize in timeline therapy, um, past life regression, um, childhood trauma, that kind of stuff, as in going back to fix things. That makes sense? So there's a headline for you guys. Try and travel is now possible, here's how. Write that down if that applies to you. Yeah, make a note of that. Uh, make a note of that because that could be good, couldn't it? Right. Um, and I do have a rationale behind each of these. So make a note of these. You will like them. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it does, says Dana. Yeah, good. Um, so time travel is now possible. Here's how. Here's one you like. Uh, yeah, analysis, completely use that. Yeah. That, by the way, if you didn't make a note, time travel is now possible. Here's how that works for anybody who specializes in unpacking uh, earlier trauma, doesn't it? Okay, so here's one. Uh, oh, no, that's not. Uh, there's one for me. Why meditation can do you more harm than good? Tell you what I was thinking here was, um, I was <laughs> actually spoke to a coach the other day and a lovely lady, she told me about her daily routine, which included uh, 20 minutes of meditation in the morning, at lunchtime and in the evenings. Uh, she also had all kinds of other good stuff that she was doing, like you know, drinking loads of water and exercising and running. Uh, but when we actually looked at it, she wasn't spending any time on her business at all, or, or at least not any useful time, okay? She was more concerned entirely with you know, her, her, her health and her physique and her mental, all that kind of thing. So uh, I just came up with the idea that if, if all you're actually bloody doing is meditating on what, what's going to happen and what you want to happen and what you're going to do, uh, you might be using that as a substitute for taking action. So think about that. Does that apply to any of your clients? Too much meditation. Stop meditating all the bloody time and actually do some stuff. Uh, and yes, Jeff, you're, you're right with me on that one. Thank you. Uh, okay, let's have a look. What else have I got? Okay, here's one you might like. Here's one you might like. This um, last part of this headline is a very popular framing for headlines. Uh, and it says this, finally, the secret to happiness. So there's a good, powerful word, finally. Um, another good powerful word to start a headline with is revealed. Revealed. Both those words, finally and revealed, sound like it's something new that's just been discovered. Yeah. People love novelty. People love something new. Right. There's no point in just pumping out the same old vanilla that everybody else is pumping out. Uh, when you get finally or when you get revealed, um, then it sounds like something new, doesn't it, that you've, that you've come up with. OK, um, that last bit in brackets, quite important part of the headline as well, um, because <laughs> it's not what you think, is it? You know, you might think I'm not reading this. I know what the secret to happiness is. It's self-love or it's good relationships or it's, you know, loving your job or something like that, you know, or enough money or something, you know. Um, but then when you add that, it's not what you think on the end. Can you see how that blows everybody's ideas out of the water? Because you're going to go, hmm, this is something different. So what, what, what we're landing on here, guys, with all your ideas, some, some of which are very, very good, by the way, uh, and, and ideas like this, we, we, we're understanding, aren't we, that we've got to grab their attention. We've got to grab their attention. Do you like that one? I hope you like that one. Uh, you can write that one down. Uh, my God. So Gregor is getting really good into uh, some stuff here. What's on the dog's collar made a call the police? Yeah. That looks like a classical sort of, uh, you know, kind of news, news site thing, doesn't it? Um, 
I've got a funny one for you. I like that one, Gregory. Yeah, really, really nice. Uh, oh, Jeffrey's um, focus down. Why you're all wrong about why you're afraid. I like that as well because it's got a bit of rhythm to it, hasn't it? Why you're all wrong about why you're afraid. It's almost a rap, isn't it? Why you're all wrong about why you're afraid. Why you're all wrong about why you're afraid. Um, notice that wouldn't work so well with a word missing. So we might have landed on something here, which is about the rhythm, the meter. If we drop the word all out of it, why you're wrong about why you're afraid, it doesn't quite flow as well as why you're all wrong about why you're afraid. It kind of just seems to work better. So inadvertently, Jeffrey, you come up with a wrap there. Uh, <laughs> what was the next one? Uh, yeah, Jeffrey likes that. Oh yeah, here, here's a good one. Uh, Match tea secrets for inner healing. Match tea secrets, match tea secrets. Again, you know, when you read that aloud to yourself, it's quite interesting form of words, isn't it? Uh, oh, Annabella. We're getting into something here, aren't we? Why you may lie to, your mind may lie to you, but your body never does. Uh, we're getting some good love here, aren't we? We are getting some good love. Uh, Jeffrey, I've no idea where you're getting these from, but um, these could serve all kinds of medical professionals. Well done. Um, I'm going to show you one here now, uh, which is just very, very silly, right? Very, very silly. Can anybody guess what I was thinking here? How could a personal trainer unlock a new method for overcoming arachnophobia? Arachnophobia, by the way, is a fear of spiders. Anybody got any ideas what I was thinking in my extremely strange mind this afternoon? When I wrote, personal trainer unlocks new method for overcoming arachnophobia, what was I thinking of? What is the new method for overcoming arachnophobia that a personal trainer can help you with? Anybody got anybody? Come on, come on, come on. You're a personal trainer. Give me a new method for overcoming arachnophobia. What might that be? Sam. Sam, Sam, Sam. Step up, have a prize. <laughs> so if your personal trainer gets you running faster. You don't have to be afraid of spiders anymore, do you? You just leg it out of the room into another place where there aren't any spiders. Yeah? Run like hell. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, not a clue, but I want to read it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So there's no point in just saying, if you're a personal trainer, run for health. Yeah? Feel better by running more. Yeah? Get your heart rate up twice a day. You know, a personal trainer advises you should run three miles a week, right? Yeah. But who's going to read that? Because we've heard it all before, haven't we? We've heard it all before, right? So if you're a personal trainer, you can have that with my blessing, with my, <laughs> with my regards. Run, run faster. Uh, well done, Sam. You are right on, on with this, aren't you? Um, some of these numbered ones work well. I've, I've been jotting something just literally on a notepad this afternoon, so I may as well, I may as well share them with you. Um, give, give us, give us some love, give us some hearts or a yay if you uh, are liking this today. By the way, if, if you're vibing with it, there's quite a lot of you here. Just, just give us a yay in the feed. I just, you know, it just gives me some, it gives me some more um, motivation, basically. Uh, okay. Right, here you go. Four shocking reasons. Four shocking reasons why your relationship is doomed to fail. That sounds horrible, doesn't it? But you don't read it, are you? No, nobody wants a relationship to fail, do they? Um, here's something as well. If you're if you're into uh, selling or marketing or anything like that, or you kind of do, um, you know, a bit of NLP, you teach people how to use. Uh, you know, persuasive language, the art of manipulation. So it starts with something that sounds not, not so ethical, but the second half of it diffuses it, doesn't it? How do you use persuasion for good? I, I would argue this, that the world is only ever changed by persuasive people. 
persuasive thinking. People persuade other people to do things. Yeah? That is how the world is changing. It really, really is. Um, yeah, good stuff. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about there, Jeffrey. I'd like to see the rest of that article. Teacher's bad breath revealed a family secret. I have to say, I am a bit of a sucker for clickbait. And I would read that article. I would totally read that article. Because I would have no idea what that could possibly be. And I really want to know. I really want to know. Uh, yeah, exactly. And as Gregory said, you know, he's persuaded to join this meeting. Of course you were. Of course you were, of course you were, of course you were. So um, this comment thread uh, will appear on the in full um, on the Johnny Cooper Global page. That's my business page. It also appear on my personal profile, I believe, all the stuff that I posted. What I'm actually going to do, I'm going to put together a little um, doc with uh, some kind of PDF or something with all those headlines that I drafted today. And I'm going to let you all have it and stick it into the uh, into the video. Now, just before we go today, I've got something really, really important uh, to share with you. Because it may or may not have escaped your attention that uh, we have just launched a new uh, program. And uh, this program is called the Social Cocoon Academy. And if you've enjoyed what we've done today, the Social Cocoon Academy has got a whole bunch more of this stuff in it, uh, along with some examples and uh, templates and things like that. Let me just get Gregory's comment off the screen. Uh, there you go. Uh, so you can see it. The Social Cocoon Academy is a really inexpensive uh, course that you can buy right now, uh, right here today from this very uh, link. So across the bottom of the screen, you can see it says bit.ly forward slash SCA-23. If you go to that web page now or bookmark it or copy it or something like that, you'll see what you're looking at on the screen, which is this thing here. And uh, this is a really simple three-part course. So there's three videos that I've recorded, uh, which show you how to um, integrate all the stuff we talked about today into your Facebook group. And actually make your Facebook group work. The idea of a social cocoon is what I call the Facebook group, by the way. Uh, or rather, I call my Facebook group a social cocoon. And um, I'm going to give you so much written guidance here. In fact, there's nine different templates. Things about how to name your Facebook group the easy way. Give us a shout in the comments, by the way, if you would like to uh, improve your Facebook group. If you'd like to get uh, people buying things from your Facebook group. Uh, give us a yay in the comments if you would like to develop your Facebook group and get people buying things in your group. In other words, monetizing your Facebook group. So uh, in this academy, uh, we've got uh, PDF guidance on how to name your Facebook group, how to design your Facebook group banner, how to invite people to join your group in a non-spammy way, how to please the algorithm, uh, the Facebook algorithm, because that's a very little understood thing. Uh, it's hardly understood at all, in actual fact. Um, there's a template here to never run out of post ideas with loads of post ideas in it. Um, and, and a further template packed with engagement posts. Engagement posts, by the way, contain a lot of the philosophies and underlying ideas that we've talked about today uh, in this session about writing headlines. We've also got, and this is an absolutely winning move, right? When people join your Facebook group, you need to ask them some sensible questions in order to get them to explain why they're there and what they want. And we don't have cheat sheets on how to set up those questions uh, when they first join. There's also a cheat sheet called Nine Powerful Do's and Don'ts of Engagement. Another one called How to Revive a Dead Facebook Group ebook. We talked about this last week on the session, but uh, it's all here. Now, also, there's a massive bonus because if you join the Social Cocoon Academy today, which don't forget gives you all these PDFs plus a three video training course about setting up a group, I'll let you book a 30 minute call with me to walk you through the whole process of setting up a Facebook group uh, and making money from it. And as you'll appreciate, you know, I am uh, in a somewhat of a position of authority to help you do this because I've grown my Facebook group, six and a half thousand members. And just before Christmas, we broke one million dollars in sales attributable directly to the free Facebook group. So if you believe 
that uh, you could do better with your Facebook group, this is the way to do it. If you feel like you're wasting time at the moment and you know not getting what you want from your Facebook group, this is the way to do it. So the ticker on the bottom of the screen, bit.ly forward slash SCA-23. I'm actually going to drop this uh, into the comments. I'm going to give you the long form version uh, of the Social Recruiting Academy page. Um, it's actually there in the comments in this chat right now. And uh, I'm also going to do it uh, in the Facebook group. But hop on over there today. It is only $397. Now, the urgency here is that it's not going to be $397 for long. Um, we're just testing it at $397 to see you know, how you guys react to it. We're going to get a few people through it to see what kind of results you're getting from it. And it's going to be substantially more expensive uh, anytime soon. So at the moment, for a value of over two thousand dollars, all the stuff that's uh, included in it, you've only got to pay a one-off three nine seven, and you get the whole uh, the whole damn thing, the Social Cocoon Academy. I think uh, listening to you guys and watching the sort of things that you're saying here today, this is really going to benefit you. Even if you're on the CAB, by the way, and if you're a member of the Client Attraction Academy, this is a useful extra program. Uh, and it's so cheap, as I say, that it's, it's you know, kind of a no-brainer to, to get on board with it. But I've actually dropped the uh, joining link in the uh, Johnny X Marketing Facebook group in the comments. I've dropped it down here so you can see it. So wherever you're watching this, you should be able to see that link to actually join the Social Cocoon Academy. At the very least, bookmark that page, bit.ly forward slash SCA-23. Hop on over to the page, have a look at it, and see what you think. If you want to join, you're welcome to join at $397. And next thing, as I say, you can actually book uh, a 30 minute one-to-one -one Zoom call with me, just you and me on Zoom. And uh, we'll get to grips with your Facebook group and see what you actually need uh, to be doing uh, in the Facebook group. And uh, as Gregory says, so it's Martin, but loves cocoons. Damn right I do. Uh, it is no brainer. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, it's very digestible, not least overwhelming. I hope the Uncle Lumpus will be here. What happened there? Uh, Annabella um, uh, is a member of the Social Cocoon Academy. You were actually one of the first to buy this, weren't you? And uh, somewhere we went wrong. There was something strange in it that uh, we had to um, we had to revise it uh, in the light of what Annabella told us. And um, one of the Uncle Lumpus was taken out the back and shot. Uh, because they did it wrong, you see. We don't we don't like people doing things wrong. Uh, thanks for that, Annabella. <laughs> Listen, I'm going to go. I'm going to go. Um, if you've landed on this page, well done. Um, at the moment, we're, we're going to leave it open uh, at this price for not very much longer. So, you know, this isn't a false scarcity. It's just too cheap at the moment. We're not charging enough for it. But if you guys want to get into... Uh, into into this for 397 do it now because uh you know it won't be available at this price for much longer you get all this this massive bundle of cheat sheets you get a one-to-one -one call with me uh, you know to walk you through your stuff and most importantly there is the three uh video course which uh annabella uh, has very kindly said uh you know it's very digestible not in the least overwhelming i hope that's what i am full stop i don't want to be in the least overwhelming and I'm quite happy to be digestible in the nicest possible way. So if you're going to join the Social Cocoon Academy, I'll see you on the inside. Um, Bit.ly forward slash SCA23. Um, whether or not you're joining it, I'll see you on Thank Flip. It's Friday. Uh, right here next week. Uh, love you lots. I'll see you later. Bye.